Hey baby, it's Bonnie Dishong, and this is Bonnie's Eye, where we have great conversations with interesting people. And today we have Devon Franklin, who is, I have here his whole bio and everything. This man is the president and CEO of Franklin Entertainment. He does a whole bunch of stuff on TV. He is the driving force behind some of Hollywood's most successful inspirational films, including Breakthrough and Miracles from Heaven, as well as a couple of films that we're going to be talking about as we go along, because I want to hear about it from his voice. Oprah Winfrey, or as my grandmother would say, Okra, uh, said that he is a different kind of spiritual teacher. And I'm telling you, once I listened to his um, his book on Audible Originals called It Takes a Woman, I can see exactly what she was talking about. Hey, Devon Franklin, how are you? I'm good. How you doing, Bonnie? I am doing well. I'm doing really well. Um, now, I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm a reader. I like to thumb through and do the dog ears and stuff. Yeah. I finally got a Kindle because I was traveling so much. I couldn't carry all the books. Right. My niece is a audio book listener. So she's the one that's trying to get me, oh, Bonnie, you need to listen. You need to oh, listen. Yeah. <laughs> when I listened um, via Audible Original to It Takes a Woman, I see what she was saying. Mm -hmm. exactly what she was saying. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you to explain to everybody why you wrote this book. Yeah, I wrote this book. Um, one, because I you know, had a meeting with Audible and they we were really interested in doing something together. Um, but two, I wanted to acknowledge and and uh, bring awareness to um, the black women, you know, in, in my family and in our, in our culture and community that, uh, sometimes are unsung heroes and, uh, you know, they do so much for who we ultimately become, especially as men. And we don't do enough to honor them and give them a moment in the spotlight. And so one doing this book, it called, it's called, it takes a woman and really allowing the voices of my mother and my five great aunts, my living five great living aunts to be heard. The youngest is 75. The oldest is 95. I wanted to make sure that their voices were preserved. They weren't lost in the sands of time as a way to really memorialize the impact that black women have had uh, for generations uh, on our families and our, our communities. You know, when I was listening to it, well, when I read about it before I listened to it, the first thing that came to my mind, which I'm sure a lot of people are saying that how can a woman raise uh, a boy past the age of 12 to be a man? And your father passed early on. Yeah, he was nine years old. Right. And so, you know, that was the first thing that really came to my mind. I was like, well, how could, and I know it's done all the time, but it always seems like there are those things that, a woman just can't get relate to that a man is growing up to be, but you changed my mind when mm -hmm. I listened to your, to your audible. So let's give some background on who you are as far as growing up and your, and your background there. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I'm a middle child of three boys. I'm from I'm a middle child. Oh, wow. We've got our support group, right? <laughs> you know, <how> is. <laughs> we got to fight for our place, you know, you got it. Um, uh, are you middle child of three girls or a boy? I'm a middle child of, I have a sister that's older and a brother that's younger. Ah, I see. I see. Got it. Um, well, yeah, you know, middle child, three boys, uh, grew up in, uh, you know, Oakland, California, Richmond, California, East Bay. And, um, you know, always knew that, uh, you know, I wanted to go into Hollywood. And then, you know, my father, you know, died when I was nine years old um, and leaving my mother to be a single mother. Um, and my mother, uh, her mother, my grandmother had seven sisters um, and my great aunts. And so my mother really involved uh, my grandmother and the, my grandmother's seven sisters in our lives quite heavily. Uh, we had men in our lives. You know, we had my grandfather who was there and one of my uncles, Pastor DJ, who was the pastor of the church. Um, but it was really the women that were really the consistent um, caretaker, so to speak, 
of me uh, and my brothers, which is why I wanted to write about this and, and put this book into the world. Well, you know, the thing is, too, when you listen to it, everybody, and I, and I really wish that you would and even have your sons listen to it yeah. because it, it all wasn't peaches and cream. No. I mean, it wasn't like, oh, yeah, I was raised by these people, these women, and everything was hunky-dory. It was hard for you. Yeah, very hard, very difficult. And, and and when, you know, you've listened to it, so, you know, in the book, I really get into the details of those difficulties. And, uh, and, and what's cool about this book is that it's really engineered for the audio experience. This is not a book that was like written and then I'm reading it. It's like, no, every choice that was made and how uh, I put this book together was with the listener in mind. So it's almost like you put it on and you're just taken into this world and the story of my family and, and how this tragedy of my father's death became like a, you know, a, a pebble in the water. And there were all these ripple effects. And so you get a chance to be involved and invested in the experience of these different ripples and hearing the different stories of my, what my aunts have gone through, what my mother went through. Um, and as, a fa as families, we don't talk enough. You know, I believe that transparency leads to transformation. And so I really wanted this book to be uh, my most transparent, um, my most honest as a way to really reach people and, and share our truth with them. The one thing that drew me into the book, because... Like I said, I like to read the book. So when I said, okay, I'm going to listen to the audible part. And I was expecting that, that monotone of mm. how some books are. Yeah. What grabbed me was hearing the voice, actual voices yeah. of your mother and your aunts and feeling their emotions and yeah. feeling because everybody, they don't hold back. They're not reading it's they're they're responding and you can actually feel it. Was it hard to get them to relax enough to talk like that? You know, it, it wasn't hard. I mean, I did individual interviews with my uh, my mom and my five great aunts. And um, to start the interview as an icebreaker, I wrote I read them the introduction that I'd already written and them hearing me talk about my perspective of my father's death. It was the first time that they had heard that. They didn't know. They didn't know that I had that memory. So as I'm reading them the introduction, all six of them just started to cry because it brought them back to where they were. So my transparency then opened up their transparency. And you know what what you hear is was at, at, on some level was very easy in that it was free flowing. And so once those interviews were done, I then took those interviews and the transcription of those interviews and then rewrote the whole book and really started to put the whole book together. Well, you did a fabulous job on that. I'm telling you, because the things that stick out with me is and it is to hear you interact with your mom during the section of and, I, and I'm going to mess it up. You don't know who I am. Oh, yeah. If you don't know me by now. If you don't know me by now. Right. And when I when I was listening to that, I could I could feel your angst and your your anger, but 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 lost. It was almost like you were lost with it. And and I then hearing your mother talk about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just just went to my heart. How was it for you? I mean, go, yeah. I know going through it but also understanding when you got to the other side of it. Yeah. You know, um, it was, it was cathartic. I mean, this was the first time my mother and I had ever discussed that moment. I didn't even know if she remembered that moment. So me asking her if she remembered me telling her that it, for those that are, are listening, uh, there was a moment when I was um, a teenager and me and my mother got into an argument. And I just lashed out at her and said, you don't know anything about me. And she said, well, at least I kept you. And so, you know, I didn't know what that meant. And I remember she was really crying and she was deeply upset. And, you know, we just kind of went on about our lives and never talked about it. And so when doing this book, what you hear is the first time that we talked about it. And I asked her, do you even remember this? And she said, not only does she remember it, but it haunts her every day. Wow. And as for a mother who was doing everything she could to maybe not have done, you know, all 
that that she thought she was doing, it just cut her to the core. And then what I talk about in the book is I I do a whole, as you know, like I explain what she meant when she says, at least I kept you. Mm -hmm. And that then dovetails into her story. And and what she meant was that my grandmother did not raise my mother until my mother was like 12, 13 years old. So my mother was raised with my great grandmother for the first 12, 13 years of her life. And as a result, she felt abandoned. She felt like she wasn't wanted by by my grandmother. She even though she was never adopted, she felt sometimes how those that are adopted can feel. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so her pledge when she got older and had children was that she was never going to give them up, that nobody was ever going to raise them. And so for her, that was success. So as long as, you know, no one is raising else is raising my children, then I have succeeded. And so for me as her child to say, no, you haven't. It was devastating to her and our ability to talk about it and, you know, really sort through it for the first time really produced a lot of healing. It was very cathartic. I'm glad that we did it. And uh, the listener gets a chance to hear for them for themselves, uh, as you have heard uh, how it all plays out. And it's it's it 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 will grab you, everybody. It it will grab you because my mind first went to here is this woman who has three sons. Her husband's dead at 36 and she's got to mourn him, but take care of the kids. And so she kind of locks herself away in order to do that. But in comes your great, great aunts, and each <laughs> one of them have a totally different personality yeah. and sound and point in your life. That's Which right. one would you say, I don't want to say made the most impact in your life, but which one would you say was your go-to aunt? Um, you know what? Aunt Donna. Aunt Donna is like my second mom. Um, you know, I, I, I talk about her in the book. I talk about her story with her daughter and, you know, me being kind of her, her only surrogate son. I don't include my other brothers, you know, I'm going own Aunt Donna for myself. Uh, so yeah, Aunt Donna is the one that I really, you know, out of all of them, I have a great relationship with all of them outside of my mother. Aunt Donna uh, is deemed my second mom. I had to laugh about the sex talks. <laughs> and you hear it from their voices, y'all. Yes. So it 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 comes at you. <laughs> they, they ain't playing either. They ain't playing. They, they ain't, ain't playing. playing. When they first set you down, whoever was first to set you down to give you the sex talk, what was your whole response to that? Uh, you know, I, as a kid, I just listened. I just listened and I took notes, you know, I was like, oh, OK, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, because um, th that was a good laughing point for me, because my mom told me about sex and we crack up about this all the time. We were looking mm -hmm. at a soap opera. One of the girls in the soap opera got pregnant. Mama turned to me and said, you get with a boy, that's what's going to happen to you. That was my sex talk. <laughs> wow, just like that. That's it. There you like go. That. Boom. It. See you but later. I told you all you needed to know. But your aunts taught you how to look at a woman. Yeah. Pleasure a woman. Yeah. Um, think about a woman. Absolutely. And, and did you take it to heart? Without a doubt. <laughs> Every lesson. I'm like, hey, okay, that's what they said. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> you know. When you got to the end of the book, what was your and you look back on it, what what was that moment for you? Um just the accomplishment and the achievement of it. You know, I mean it's it's uh you know, I was really I just put it down with a sense of pride that one I could do something to memorialize and canonize my family. And this would be, this is a legacy, you know, book. I mean, even, you know, when we're no longer here, people can listen to this and it will, it will be eternal on some level. And, uh, you know, it was very difficult to try to take a life experience and put it into a cohesive uh, story that someone can listen to beginning, middle and end. And I felt very pleased and very proud that I was able to do this and the thing that really makes me proud is that my mother is 70, the youngest aunt is 75, the oldest aunt is 95. And usually as you get to the end of life, 
you know, you look in the rear view for what you've already done and you look back and say, oh, all that was great. For this, this has given them almost a new lease on life. They To be able to participate in it, to be able to do the video shoot, the photo shoot, to do press, they feel like their entire lives uh, now they're they're getting their their flowers. They're getting validated. They're getting appreciated in a way they never thought was possible. So that makes me feel good. You know, it's great for me to be able to do it, but it's really about them feeling a little bit of what they've given to me. So all the the value and validation I feel because of them, I now want them to feel because of this project. And it's great to be able to give women uh, in our culture, in our community, our black women who we take so much from to give back to them. And you do it so, so well, so, so well. And let's take, because now, I mean, you go through this, everybody, when you're listening to it, you go through his life. So you you go through that kiss, the last kiss for his father, yeah. all the way to, you know, where he is now. And, and you, you, I know they're all so proud of, Little Devon, because you are really doing great things. So let's talk about real quickly before we go, your new inspirational films that you're doing. OK, yeah. You know, I mean, I have a couple films that I'm working on that are in development. I have another one in post-production. Um, the the new piece of content I have, in addition to the book that's getting ready to come out, is a new TV series um, that comes out May 19th with BET+. Plus. It's called Kingdom Business. And it's, um, yeah, it's basically empire set in the world of gospel music. Oh, and let me tell you, it is, it is unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. I mean, when you see this series, Yolanda Adams and Soraya and Michael Beach and Michael Jai White and Kirk Franklin, I mean, Kirk Franklin is also an executive producer with me along with Dr. Holly Carter. I mean, there is so much in this that, uh, I'm just excited for people to see it. I can't wait to see it. I really, really can't You're wait. You're gonna love it. I, I You're know I am. Absolutely gonna love it. And it's on BET Plus. And let me tell you, the drama. The, it's like there's romance. There's um, uh, how do you put it? There's like a murder mystery. You know mm -hmm. that? Yeah, that gets set up in the first uh, in the first um, uh, in the first episode. And uh, people that have already, you know, we've done a little sneak previews here and there. People, they, they can't believe it. They're like, whoa, this is our new favorite show. <laughs> <laughs> and it's on BET? Um, it's on BET Plus. Mm -hmm. BET Plus. Okay. So, and it starts May 19th, you said? Uh, May 19th. Um, I don't, I, yeah, May 19th in the evening. You know, I don't, you know, with streaming, they just drop it. So they say May 19th. I think it's like 730 at night or something like that. So it's going to be and one of those that I, I wish, okay, give me the second episode, but I'm going to have to wait for the second episode because I've got to eat the first episode. Okay. Right, right, right. <laughs> exactly. 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 So when you see it though, I promise you, you're going to be like, wait a minute, y'all, we need more than eight episodes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, for your next thing, you know, I have my degree in theater. So if you ever need the dead tree in the corner in the back, <laughs> you me, okay, got it? I love it. I love it. I got you. I got you. I got you. We're going we gonna to do it. All right, Devon. Everybody, I want you to go to Audible Originals because I want you to hear the voices and hear the emotion and, and hear everything um, of this. And it takes a woman and... Thank you for bringing us all in and making us a part of your village. Oh, because thank you. Once once you hear it, you 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 just feel like you're a part of you. Oh yeah, thank you so much for that, Bonnie. It makes me feel good. Thank you for listening to it, and thank you for the opportunity to talk about it. Thank you so much, Devon. You're welcome. God bless.